I'd like to thank LastPass for sponsoring this portion of the video. And while I do this ad read, I'm gonna have Antoine bind my hands. <laughs> Antoine? So LastPass relieves the burden of remembering online passwords. Stop getting locked out of your accounts and let LastPass fill in your usernames and passwords. You can, you can make it tighter. Er, okay, wait. Tight enough? Yeah, that's, that's tight enough. Thanks, Antoine. <laughs> this is a bad idea. This kind of feels like being locked out of your passwords, actually. LastPass allows you to keep track of your passwords easily so you can stay sane. <laughs> LastPass autofills your credentials on mobile sites and apps for iOS and Android. When you open an app or site, LastPass will fill in your username and passwords for you, making it fast and easy to log in. So you won't be stuck in this predicament. Some of the features include unlimited password storage, free cross device sync, and password sharing. So all you need to do now is click the link below in the description and start using LastPass today. Thanks again for LastPass sponsoring this portion of the video. So this is the predicament that we're in right now. I've asked Antoine to tie my hands for a reason. Uh, as you know, I'm a big Magic fan. I'm a big fan of Houdini. Now Houdini was known for escaping shackles and ropes and chains and locks and breaking out of prisons. And today we're gonna add that extra element while we try to solve one of the world's hardest lock puzzles, the T9 Pop Lock. This is a beautiful lock crafted by Rainer Pop, made of brass and steel. Look at this thing, look how intricate that is. It looks like a regular lock, does come with a key here, and the goal, obviously, is to open the lock, but it sounds easy, it always does. It never is, as you know. So without any further ado, let's get into solving the T9 lock puzzle whilst I am tied up. This is a bad idea, this is a really bad idea. Probably shouldn't do this. It's a really hard lock puzzle. Like, there's no need for this. There's no need for this. Oh, too late now. Let's get into solving the T9. <laughs> this is a bad idea. Although these look loose, just being restraint in them is, is already, like, chafing my arms here. Okay. This is the lock. The pop lock. What do we have? We have a little bolt here. We got a bolt here. We got... A bunch of little things, the keyhole, these red things, which usually, uh, you know, uh, the pop locks, if they have a red thing, that's usually like just for machining. Those won't be used probably. Nope. Look at that, that moves. First things first, we put the key in. And the key goes round and it comes back out. So there, there is a resistance on the inside, like a, like a pretty strong resistance when turning it. No clicks or anything, just like a resistance. But here's the thing, there seems to be, there's a second compartment where the key just spins freely. I can set the key, let's say sideways, pull it back out and retrieve the key. And if you notice inside, the keyhole is now shifted to where that key is this way. Okay. So that doesn't seem to do anything. What if I push down on it? No. Is the key a clue here? Looks like a normal key. Hmm. These little uh, knobs on the inside seem to compress on the inside a little bit. Trying to see if there's like a combination. No. Look at how red my arms are already. This seems to be attached to this. Because when I press down on that, oh, what's this? Look at that. Whoa! Ha! <laughs> Yo, the tool. The tool that makes this a sequential discovery puzzle. Always fun to find a tool. Here we go. Now that we have the, t oh, I see. This tool goes here and we push these things with it. Okay, hold on. What if I push? Ah, there we go. So now, look, I can push it in. And we push and turn. Oh. Oh, that's cool. Okay, so these little uh, pins can be pushed down, which is cool. 
Oh, and they're popped back up. All right, let's get that one back down there. Okay, so once I, oh, I see. I can push it in and then I can lock it into place and then I can unlock it. So watch, I'm gonna push it. I have to find that groove here by turning the key. As soon as I got it, I'm gonna push it in and then I'm gonna lock it like that. So the, the key stops, I can pull this out, I can take out the key and that stays there. But as soon as I move the key, picks, it goes right back up again. So there is, let me, let me tighten this up for you guys here. This keeps getting loose on me and I can't take it, you know? Man of my word here. Urgh. Urgh. Antoine did a pretty fairly good job of that knot. I'm pretty surprised. Is the goal to, what's the goal? Is there like a, probably like a combination here with these? Let's see if we can get another one of these to, yeah, that one locks as well. Can we lock two? Oh, well, one's going down, hold on. There we go. That one doesn't seem to lock at all, this bottom one here. Try locking this one. Oh, oh. Okay, so I, I'm pretty sure what we have to do. <sighs> I'm pretty sure what we have to do is lock um, all of these things in uh, individually. Sounds easy enough. Boom. Locked. Boom. Oh, no. Oh, so now that one's locked and that one came up. So, and now that one. Uh, if I can get three, then I know I can get four. You know what I mean? Four. <laughs> Let's go. Oh, oh no. Oh no. Wait, we got three there now. That one went down. Okay, okay, okay. We're so good. We're so good. Oh, no, we're not. All right. Three. You can see that, right? So I can unlock it, push it in, lock it. But then by, here, let me just give you a demonstration. Watch what happens when I, when I go left here. Bing, bing, bing. That's a really cool, that's a really cool thing. It feels cool in the hands too, and it looks cool, sounds cool. There's something we're missing. So I guess I'll just try a bunch of these combinations here and see what works. That bottom one doesn't do anything. The top one was a good one. We're gonna stick with the top one. Go down here, boom. Oh, so when I locked that, so there's a margin where you can lock it. Crappy drawing skills here, okay? So, some of these locks, um, like that, that top one locks like a solid 90 degrees, right? So a solid 90 degrees and it locks. Uh, that bottom one, this one here, that bottom one uh, locked maybe, I would say 45 degrees, right? So it's ha it has a shorter uh, lock span, I guess. And so I'm guessing now, if I go to the third one, depending on what the third one is here, let's say this one here, uh, see? Because that lock span is shorter, I have to, so I lock it here, but then I have to crank it backwards in order to drop the pin down through, okay? So I gotta lock it and then crank it backwards, but I have to lock it and then crank it backwards. <laughs> Once I lock it, um, cranking it backwards, if I go too far, so past this threshold, um, the pin will pop up, okay? So I have to go here and then I have to make sure the next one is shorter than this. So let's say, let's say it stops here, but then the next one is only gonna lock like this and then the next one has to be shorter than that. Do you understand what I'm saying? So I feel like because of that and all of these ones have a different, uh, different locking radius. I hope I'm making sense here. So let's say I have a long locking radius, right? And then I come back, but this one has a short locking radius. So by the time I come back here, click, it's gonna click again if the next one has a longer locking radius than this one. So I have to find them in sort of descending order, starting from the biggest to the middle and so forth so that I can lock them all. Otherwise, if, if one of these is shorter than the next one's longer, which means pop goes the lock. I, I know that didn't make real sense, but I, it makes sense in my head. Because here, look, let's take this top one again. If I push this in, 
All right, my key is stuck here. It is stuck. But if I turn it, boom, I've got about, I would say 30 degrees there. And I'm locked in. So now if I go to this one, I have to push down on this and I have to turn my key slowly so that I don't unlock it. Oh, now this one went down. I could lock it again, right? Boom. So that one, that one about 20 degrees. Now let's say this one here. So turn it, boom, that goes down, lock it, and it's getting shorter and shorter. So we we'll go here. That one doesn't do it at all. This one, boom, I've got five. Here we go. And that one was really short. So this one here, I'm really hoping the radius is really short. Because otherwise, what's gonna happen is this one's gonna go pop. And there it goes. So the radius was too short, I believe. Just for just for just for the sake of it, we're gonna. Yeah. Hmm. Let's try that again. Oh, that's weird. So here's the other dilemma that I just discovered: is that the key. This is not cool. This is what's gonna make this a long solve. Right now, the key's in straight. If I push this one here down and I turn, it'll eventually fall into a groove, like right there. So now my key is angled this way and it's found a groove, but wait. If I take it out of there, turn my key a bit, I'm gonna keep turning, guess what? Another groove. There are multiple grooves. So not only do I have to find the sequence of where the pins go, but I also have to find the correct groove or grooves, uh, well, you probably groove, uh, that helps solve everything. So we're gonna go one, two, because that's, oh no, see the radius here is very, very short. Um, I'm not exactly sure where, let me turn this up a bit. I'm not sure where I had it to where it wasn't. Um, so we did this, we did the bottom, we did this. We go here. Uh, where is it? Here. Boom, locked. See? Hopefully this is the good, uh, the good section. Feels like it, boom, that's locked as well. This is great. <sighs> locked and my thumb is hurting. Look at that. What did we do last time? We did this one, this one. Let's try this one. Ooh, that's four. Let's go for five. <laughs> Can you guys see that? I really want you to see what's going on and understand what's going on. So we got four of them. We did, which one did we do? We did one, two, three, and then four. And now we're doing five with a key oriented this way. Uh, we gotta push down. Unlock it. Is it? Oh. It's really hard to do with your hands tied. Oh, see, now that one went back up. So the radius might be too short over here. Let's, uh, boom, locked. Boom, locked. Oh, let's go, we got five. Going for the last one. And that one doesn't turn at all. I even tried starting with that one, but that one doesn't lock into place whatsoever. Okay. Ah, no. <laughs> okay. All right. 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 Maybe I didn't find. So my key was oriented which way? It was this way. Maybe we'll try something around here. Do that same sequence. Oh, it's not even working. See the locking radius? Look how short it is. Watch me turn the key. Right, so notice the difference between that one and now let me lock this one. Now watch, look at the locking radius here. So notice before I just turned it a bit and went click, now watch. Boom, do you see what I mean by the locking radius? See if I do it here and use this other groove, I'm fully, I'm fully on this side, but watch me turn it right now. The, even the smallest turn. Boom. The locking radius over here, when my key is oriented 
like this uh, is much bigger. I don't even know how that looks like on the interior, but in my mind, I have a very clear picture because that makes sense to me because I'm feeling the resistance, I guess. And as obscure as it is, that's the type of thing that you have to keep in mind when solving puzzles is nothing is too obscure. Even the crazy logical ideas that you have in your head that don't seem to add up when you're trying to draw them, they make sense because in some weird way that logic is going to guide you. Those are the blind things that you have to look out for, you know? Okay, so where was this key? It was here. Wait, key goes in here. We're gonna use this top part. So I've been on this, so I've been on this for like what? What time is it now? I like an hour and 15 minutes. No timer, my battery, I left my timer on all night, well, all week really, the battery died. We don't have any batteries around the office. It's kind of nice not having to stare at the timer. Now this last one again. Again, we're stuck on this last one. What if I try to turn the key? Oh, 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 it got stuck. <gasps> it got stuck. Oh, what if I just use this side of it? <sighs> oh, yeah. Oops. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I don't want to lose that. Check this out. Look at that. That is the inner mechanism. So I'm guessing this, if I just turn this, it'll open. Be so much easier if I wasn't tied up. Look at look at the welts on my arms. What if I'm allergic to this stuff? Look at this. It's all for you guys. It's all for you. Turn that key here. So we got it. We got we got pretty far. I'm pretty happy with the amount of progress that we have here. Okay, there we go. One, two, three. Yes. Four. Five. Use this side. Look at my fingers. That's that's from a lot of just like pressing. It's just like pressing down on this little metal pin constantly for the last hour and a half. So, as you can see, those pins, they come back. They sort of rotate, but then if it does a whole 360, it just goes back to the way it was, right? Pretty sure this thing has something to do with it. How did that pin come out? Oh! No. New, new, new. So you can actually press these things too. There's a, can you see? Okay, it's gonna be hard for you guys to see that, but inside there, you see that discoloration? There is a small circle. So maybe we can see it here better. Oh, lines up perfectly here. So in this hole here, you see how it's darker than these? That is a perfect circle that is in there. And not only is that a perfect circle, you can push on it. It is spring loaded. So here's what I'm thinking. I'm gonna press on that and I'm gonna turn the key. That doesn't work. Press on that, try one more time. No. How does this even work? Why does this randomly go down? Look, so random. And now, stuck. But if I play around with this thing down here, there you go. So now I'm gonna press on this. And nope, I probably have to press it. Maybe I can press it here. There's gonna be a button underneath. Oh, so you see this right here? So it's always like off kilter, just a little bit, just a little bit like grabbing the edges. But as soon as I like center it out, maybe it was like a magnet or something. Cause it, it moves like freely in there almost. But as soon as I center it out, if no, it's pretty much centered. Kind of just like gravity take care of it. 
Aha. <gasps> Let's go! Look at my wrists. Oh my god. How is that the solution? One hour, 50 minutes, roughly. An hour and 50 minutes. Is that button here? Can I... Like you don't even see that button that well. Look at it, it's like a half moon here. It actually lines up perfectly on the bottom hole. So weird that it'd be the top hole that made it spring open. So take a look here. So you see that hole there? And if you look in here, there's a rod like dangling. It's like straight up like this and it's dangling. And this piece of brass is on, see that bolt that's there is on a little bolt like this. And so it's just kind of like dangling freely and you got to line it up with this for that to be able to go through. Otherwise it won't to make it go down. You know what I mean? Cause right now it's like stuck upwards. So if I, boom. Oh, that makes a lot of sense. Here we go. Whoa. I think we can do that one more time for good measure just to, uh, uh, just without ropes. That'll be so nice. All right, here we go. Ready? And mark, get set, go. Uh, first things first, this thing. Boom, got that. Key goes in. We want to find the groove, this groove here. We want to go here, so it goes like this. No, nope, that's not the right one. What's going on here? Boom, one. Boom, two. Nope, oh, whoop. Boom, two, three, fingers hurt, four, five, flip it around, go here, twist it, find that point right here, lock this thing down. Press that, boom, there you go. The mark of a great lock puzzle is definitely one that you can replicate that, that takes you hours to solve, but you can replicate within minutes because you know the solution. That is so clever. I'm very happy that I found out that sequence. Uh, I think this is, I'm, I'm honestly mentally drained right now. <laughs> I think this is probably one of my favorite pop locks. I say that about a lot of pop locks, but I, I really love the solution here. And that, that mechanism that just, this, this part that goes like this, hold on. This part right here makes it all worth it. Ready? Whoa. Like I could actually use this lock. Would that take me like a minute to undo? I could actually use this lock for something. There you go, ladies and gentlemen, the T9. I am done. Hot. I'm spent. You know, I don't, I don't recommend ever solving very difficult puzzles in one take, let alone bound by your wrists. It's such a terrible idea. Look at my wrists right now. Like rope burn on my arms. My brain is dead. Tired. <laughs> In conclusion, uh, this was a very fun lock. One of the funnest I've done. Uh, a lot funner than the T12, which is the newest one he released, which I thought was a pretty cool lock. Uh, but this one, however, I loved. This is exactly what my brain was going through at the time. It's an intricate lock, and I have no idea how one person comes up with something like this uh, and, and actually makes it work and then has someone solve it. That blows my mind. But this is a really fun lock indeed. That's it for today. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you guys on the next video. Peace. Rah.